Hey guys, it's time for another author to confession. Hey guys, welcome back to my author tube channel if it still exists. I know these days I'm not uh, posting as often as I'd like to, but I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress, always, always. Um, Falky heard me talking and he's not used to me talking to the camera anymore. He's like, what's going on, mommy? Why is there, why are you talking in that voice? Um, poor guy was supposed to get groomed today and the groomer had to take her daughter to the emergency room, so he didn't get to get his little bath and his hair cut. Do you wanna say hi? Since you're snoring right next to me. See, look. See, mommy's gonna talk to the camera. She's got an author to confession. He's like, eh, I'm sick of your confessions. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to do today was kind of do another author tube confession. This one's not really an opinion. It's more just me confessing some writing issues that I have. Um, and sorry about snoring. Uh, if you couldn't already tell by the title, I'm going to talk about being a writer with an anxiety disorder. Now, I think this is something that a lot of you can relate to on some level or another. I know many of us on AuthorTube struggle with anxiety. And they kind of vary, I think, um, to different degrees. Some of you just worry about your writing because you care about it and worry is a normal, natural part of life. Some of you may be a little more elevated with your worry about certain aspects of writing or um, you know, maybe you worry a little too much about a few things and it's a little annoying, you know, and it, it's just something you work on. And some of us have gotten a level of anxiety where it takes a little bit of intervention, maybe some good self-talk, meditation, yoga, uh, maybe seeing a counselor, you know, things like that. And then there's my category where you uh, have a brain that is not wired correctly and doesn't understand fight or flight. And the only way to get your brain to react normally to things is to give it medication. Now I have dealt with anxiety my whole life. Um, this is a whole other video I'll make some other time probably for my personal channel, like my journey with my mental health. But I had a traumatic event happen when I was in my early 20s that took my anxiety, which was already at a level that it shouldn't be and just skyrocketed it to out of control. And since then, over a decade, I've been learning to deal with it and it was not always the easiest thing. You have to try several different doctors, different methods, different medications. Um, and it wasn't until about three years ago that I got the right medication because my anxiety did get so bad that it was absolutely ruining my life. And I'm not I'm not saying that to be like dramatic. It was affecting every single aspect of my life because I also have depression um, where I would make myself sick, literally, uh, worrying about everything. Things that you should worry about and things that you shouldn't worry about. The what ifs. I was making everything into this big scary thing that my my like myself just wanted to retreat from everything and it got to a point where I did spend about six months um, in bed not working not interacting with people um, it was just a dark 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 place um, but I finally gratefully got on medication that got me out of bed got me back to life and uh, but the bad news is with that is that even with medication even with uh, all of that uh, good coping skills and stuff like that. Unfortunately, because this is something that has to do with brain chemistry, it's something I have to deal with my whole life. I mean, it's never going to go away. Um, my medication more or less just helps me not dwell on every day and like insane things. I still have to work on my coping skills. I still have to work through things. And I do unfortunately still have triggers and those triggers all the medicine in the world, I just, I don't know, it just kind of like calms me down a little bit so that I can try to work on it, but it's still a work in progress. And there are certain things in my life because of past issues and traumas and things that will always be triggers for my anxiety. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> for some reason, writing is somewhat of a trigger for me. It's not a trigger in the same way that like stressful things are, but my writing and my ability to create and uh, expose myself and the the way that art matters to me and creating art and loving it is so intrinsically like in me and part of how I see myself as a person that I take it so seriously it matters so much to me that it 
basically makes me inert. Like I am so self-conscious about doing it that my anxiety makes it almost impossible. And that's why you'll see these bouts even on my channel where like I'll be having a really good time and I'll be writing a lot and producing a lot and creating videos and then you kind of see me taper off because that's when my anxiety is really high and when I have other things in my life that are really high anxiety inducing it makes it even harder to get into the writing and the reason why like well what I want to kind of talk about is first of all just kind of make this confession like this is why I'm not always producing every single day and every single week and this is why I've been learning to make aversions to things like uh, word counts on word sprints and things like productivity trackers and things like that because I have to look for the things that trigger my anxiety and avoid those kinds of things and I know not everyone's like this I'm not at all implying that obviously I'm the one with the you know the, <laughs> the issue here but I'm just saying this is where I'm coming from so I wanted to kind of make this confession so that you understood like you know where I'm coming from why I am how I am and maybe some of you can relate and I really wanted to also confess what it's like because a lot of times people don't really quite understand like oh so you're worried about your writing we're all worried about your writing no mine's on another level I overthink every single Thing. every choice that I make every word that I choose every feature of a character I think well someone might think this or what if they think this or what if they don't understand this or what if this is confusing or what if the way I word this made them think this but I actually want them to think this like to a level that it's like I get so overwhelmed and like bogged down that I feel like I just can't write like I just am so stressed about every single aspect of what I'm writing and it's so hard because normally when something is that stressful you stop doing it but when I stop doing it I feel terrible too because I feel like I have all these stories and I have all these things and it's something that's so in me like I I loved my PhD program for a lot of reasons, but one of the number one reasons was because when it came time to write that dissertation, I thought if I'm gonna spend years writing a book, this is not the kind of book that I wanna write. I want to write fiction. I want to write the stories that I have in my head, that I have in my heart, and it's so frustrating to feel like your brain is working against you, um, and you're trying, your best to still make that happen so so yeah so i i'll think about every scenario i think about everything the reader could think and then i also get scared like well what if i make this person say this thing will someone interpret it like this or will they think i'm actually saying this will this offend somebody will this and this is not one of those kind of videos like <laughs> I'm not trying to say that. What I'm saying is it's like everything. I I worry that like my sentences will get misread or that the people will think the dialogue is not right. And I know that these are normal worries, but it is so I don't even know if I can convey like how bad it is that I overthink every single aspect to the point where I just I can't I don't know how to get past it sometimes. I really don't. It definitely creates a block. I don't know. I it's not as easy as someone saying just let it go like you just have to just whatever like my brain doesn't work like that unfortunately like it just doesn't and it doesn't do it with any of the things that trigger me or make me stressed out and so I don't know I don't know why I'm even confessing this I just feel like it's something I struggle with so much and it's I just feel like I need people to that i don't know hear me validate my experience i don't know i don't know what i'm looking for with this confession video i just wanted to talk about it because it's just something that's really stressed me out for a long time and i i get so down and i get so worried like i start thinking like well i'm 36 and i still haven't done it and what if i'm spending this time on this book and this isn't going to be the book that gets me an agent and i've wasted all this time working on it or what if this you know they're not going to like this topic or this aspect or what if they what if this is too close to an, a real life story and someone's going to come after me like this is what i'm talking about folks irrational it has gotten to an irrational level where i'm like afraid people are going to sue me because i accidentally wrote a story that's actually close to a real life story and then people are going to be mad at me about it even though i didn't really know it you know you know, it's like, I used to have a really big fear of being, <laughs> this will tell you how irrational my anxiety can get. I used to have a really bad fear that I would, whenever I was around cops, 
or something like that. And sometimes it still pops up. I get so afraid that I'm going to be arrested and thrown into jail for a crime I didn't commit. <laughs> like I, I watch all of these documentaries, which I know as a person with anxiety, I should not do these things. It's like, it's like the equivalent of like, don't look up WebMD because you're always going to think you're dying no matter what your symptoms is. But I watch these documentaries of people who spend 20 years in prison for a crime they didn't commit. And I just keep thinking, oh my God, what if I fit the description? You know, like what if I was in the wrong place at the wrong time and they think it was me and I would get so worked up or what if they think I did this thing? And it's like, I don't know. It's just like my anxiety goes to such a crappy place sometimes. And I don't really stress about that as much anymore now that I'm on the good medication because that's not really, but there are certain things that trigger me that I, I still can't get out of that irrational fear. And I don't know that there's ever a way to overcome it. I don't know that there's, I mean, the medication I'm on is the best medication I've ever been on, but I still have these issues. And I guess what I'm confessing is you can still be a writer and not right. And it can still really matter to you even if you're struggling to do it. And this is sometimes why I can't do a 20 or 30 minute sprint because I can only be excited in the moment for 10 to 15 minutes before that little piece of anxiety starts rearing its ugly head again. I Hey, so I just wanted to add, this is editing Laura here, and I just wanted to add um, that I kind of wanted to explain a little bit. I forgot to mention also when talking about the writing sprints. Another reason why a lot of times, especially when I'm in the, my anxiety is kind of cyclical, so when I'm in the really bad cycle, um, I can really only write during writing sprints because the way I have to write is in like complete silence. I can't listen to music or have other things going on, but when my anxiety is really high, that's also like the worst thing is complete silence because that's when I start having intrusive thoughts. So, um, that's when I start worrying about every little thing and all these things start running through my head. Um, and so when my anxiety is bad, like it has been recently, I can't be around silent. I can't be in silence at all. Like I have to go to sleep either listening to the TV or like a podcast or something. Um, when I'm at work, I work on my computer and so I have to like have headphones in and I'm either listening to a book or YouTube videos or music or something um, like at all times because as soon as it's quiet, it, that's when that little anxiety likes to chirp 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 in my head and um, so even when I'm writing like when I, I'm trying to focus on the story but all I can do is think about other things it's really hard for me to concentrate um, which like sucks because I can't write with other distractions but then my brain becomes its own distraction when my anxiety is bad so it's also another reason why like I don't write a lot when my anxiety is bad <laughs> um and uh yeah so it's kind of like this weird double-edged sword like how do i like what do you do so a lot of times when i do writing sprints uh, i feel slightly distracted because people are in the chat or i'm you know on on the screen with kevin and um and it's just a short enough amount of time that that's why i don't do long like sprints that's why i say i can't write for that long it's really just because my mind doesn't stay quiet long enough for me to, to write like that long. So I can maybe get 10, 15, 20 if I'm lucky. I usually don't last the 20 because then my brain starts to worry either about the writing or other things and I get distracted and so I have to like pick up my phone or look at something and it's like, it's just what I have to do to keep myself from like spiraling, you know? So it's another thing that another reason why I'm not as like productive like I wish I could be like some of you who you know oh I got two extra hours this week I'm gonna write for two hours like I can't or like or like Be Becca like I so I envy my friend Becca C. Smith because she can just like work for an hour and I could just never do that I can't my brain will not let that happen it just won't I I it's almost like ADD I don't have ADD but it's just like my brain can't focus for that long without worrying or like going to a like with intrusive thoughts so i have to be constantly distracted like i would freak out if i didn't have my phone on me like i i can't i can't be alone with my thoughts for very long so you know not the best um so yeah so that also 
really makes it hard uh, to be a writer with that kind of anxiety. Basically, I guess also what I'm trying to say is you have to figure out what works for you and I don't know, will this prevent me from ever really making it as a writer? I don't, I don't know. I don't want to think that. I want to think that people with, you know, disabilities or mental issues or whatever you want to call it can still persevere, can still be productive. I know that it's really hard. Some days it's really hard to just exist in this brain that I have. And um, writing gives me so much joy and so much, so much solace, but it also brings me so much stress and anxiety and it's just, it's hard. It's really hard. And uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe this explains a lot about who I am and a lot of the other choices I make in my life. But, yeah. So, that's my confession. I'm a writer with severe anxiety and panic disorder. And I don't know if I'll ever finish my book. I don't know if I'll ever get something published. But I do know that I am determined to keep at it and some days some weeks some months are going to be easier than others but the good news is right now I have I'm out of this most recent anxiety induced fugue of writing and I'm really excited about what I'm working on and I've been writing and working on my writing for about a week now and so I'm trying to make more videos and I'm trying to um, uh, you know vlog and stuff so hopefully that that continues but you know my life is really like in a weird place right now um, and so I'm trying to um, use writing as something to escape rather than something that adds to the stress unfortunately I don't always get to make the choice of how my brain interprets that but right now it's interpreting it as a good thing so I'm gonna ride that train as long as I can so so yeah, that was just my little, you know, sometimes you just have to shout into the void, you know, and speak your truth and hope that someone's listening and hope that maybe someone understands you or at least says, hey, you know, that sucks. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say, or maybe you don't, but yeah, that's my confession. I struggle with anxiety and, um, Every single day is a battle, but it's one that I never plan to give up. So thank you guys, as always, for listening and for watching. Oh, look, behind my head is a steam cleaner. <laughs> I was like, what is that orange thing for a second? <gasps> Way to break the, uh, the mood there. All right, guys, so hopefully I'll make some more videos soon. I just hadn't been making them because I hadn't really been writing, and I've been stressing, and I didn't even know what to talk about. So then I was like, you know what, girl, then just talk about what's been going on. So that's what I did. All right, guys. Well, thank you as always. But I do want to actually get back to my writing. So I will talk to you soon. Bye.